you know, no more perfect place to talk to you about your calling than in the sanctuary of God's church. You see, there's an old saying, and we call it being called. And it means you've got a purpose for your life. A nurse, 39 years, called to be a life coach and then called to go into seminary. Everyone has a calling on their life. And when you answer that call, you are answering to him who is behind life itself. When you answer that call, you will rise to your fullest as a human being. I know some folks say, gosh, I need a road map. I, I don't know how to, to find my calling. You don't need a road map. You got a built-in GPS God-powered system that's gonna guide you on who you are created to be. And maybe sometimes you feel like it's saying recalculate or turn around. So hopefully today I can help you with that purpose. I found my purpose and that's what I want for you. Now sometimes that calling feels like a sense of peace, quietness that comes over you, a knowing that you have inside. And sometimes that calling feels like a burst of energy, that heart flip I call it, that excitement that you get when you hear or see or somebody says something that gets you excited and knowing that that's who you are, that that's what speaks to your heart. I got a couple of stories to share with you about some folks that determined their calling. And one's about a young woman. She was a runner. She'd get up every morning before dawn and she'd run her route. Part of that route took her by a homeless shelter. And she'd see the men standing outside, keep running. But one morning, she said, it came to me. I'm supposed to be running with them. And she went to the shelter that evening talked to the director, got a team organized, and got those men running with her in the morning. And some of them stopped drinking and stopped smoking and went back to school and got jobs and felt good about themselves that they could accomplish something. Nike heard about it, started donating tennis shoes. It's a national program now called Back on My Feet. And thousands of lives changed because somebody answered the call. There's another story I gotta share with you about a woman that I heard who answered the call. I saw her on TV and she said, you know, it came to me like a drip in my head. These children in orphanages, they need something to call their own. They need their own, a new set of pajamas. And she started collecting pajamas. And when I heard her on TV, she was collecting tens of thousands of pajamas. The Lord heard her and opened up the floodgates. And so many children's lives changed because she answered the call, the calling on your life. Everybody, everybody has a calling on their life. You see, you are significant and purposeful in God's plan. There is something that you have been created to do on this earth. And if we can't figure out what it is for you, something's not gonna get done. Nobody looks like you, sounds like you, has your gifts and passions. You are purposeful, you are significant in God's plan. You got a call in on your life. And when you answer his call, you are answering to him who is behind life itself. When you answer his call, you will rise to your fullest as a human being. Now he won't ask you and call you to be somebody else. He's gonna call you to be you. He might call you to go back to school. He did me. I had every excuse that you do. I said, I'm too old. I don't have enough time. I can't afford it. School kept coming up and I kept with the excuses and kept putting it off. And one day I got a phone call and it was from an organizer 
for the walk to Emmaus, and they were looking for a speaker, somebody to talk to the pilgrims, and they were interested in me, and my heart flipped. I said, this is it. This is one of my life's passions. This is something I've always wanted to do. And I didn't get the job because I hadn't been back to school. And I said, Lord, you knew it all along. You've been trying to get me to go back to school. I got myself in seminary. And you know what? Somehow, I've always been able to make the payments. Somehow, I've always managed to have time. And you know what? I'm going to be 65 anyway. And I'd rather be 65 with a degree in Christian education than 65 without it. You're going to be 35 anyway. You're going to be 50 anyway. You're going to be 75, 80 anyway. Who had you rather be? Who is God calling you to be? Who will you be? when you answer his call.